Now, during these last two and a half years, during this pandemic, uh, people have been taking a lot of hits on this subject matter. We're gonna, and I, I think, praise God, uh, because of it, uh, they, they need to be rebuilt in this area. So I'll seek the Lord about it. And now we're ministering tonight on health and healing God's will for you. Now, 3 John 2 says this, uh, amen. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. In the course, the Greek word for health means to be well in body. Even as thy soul prosperous, and the word prosperous here means as your soul succeeds. So when you talk about, amen, the, the writer had it, I think just right, praise God. Uh, and that is when you start talking about health, uh, amen, then there's something that's very important to it. In other words, 3 John 2 lays out for us the necessary areas to work on to be in health. With this statement as your soul prospers, this includes understanding of the subject. Willingness to do everything in the three-part nature of man because you are a spirit being. You have a soul, which is the mind, will, and emotions. And you live in a body, praise God. So a willingness to do everything in all three areas in order to remain healthy. Now, sickness and disease is part of the curse. Amen. Before there was sin, there was no sickness and disease. Till Adam and Eve fell, there was none. Hallelujah. We get over into Israel and we find out that God talked about how sickness and disease was part of the curse of the broken law. Well, amen. Turn to Isaiah 53. We go over some ground that we well know, but it's good for us to look at it again before we get further into this today. Can I get three hallelujahs tonight? We're very familiar with Isaiah 53 as Isaiah is prophesying about the coming Messiah who will be about seven centuries later. And he says in verse 4, surely regarding him, he hath borne, which means he has carried away our griefs. The word griefs here means any malady, any disease, and then any sickness. Praise God. And he carried our sorrows. And this word sorrows means afflictions and pains. And so the Messiah, of course, who is Jesus, is going to carry away or bear all maladies, diseases, sicknesses, afflictions, and pain for us. The reason why he did it is so that you and I don't have to have it. Amen. Praise God. This talks about how the world then esteemed him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. We read down here in verse 10, yet it pleased the Lord, and in turn the Lord refers to Jehovah himself. Praise God the Father. It was the Lord who bruised him. He had put him to grief, or as again as the Hebrew actually says, that it was the Lord who made him sick and afflicted. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see seed, he shall prolong days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hands. And so it was God the Father's plan, amen, for Jesus to bear our sicknesses, our diseases, our pains, our griefs, praise God. It was the Father, amen, who laid this out so that Jesus would be the offering to pay the price for our sin, which opened the door to sickness and disease in the world, uh, amen. And God saw him as seed that he plants in the ground. Because Jesus then was the only begotten son of God, but today he is the firstborn among many brothers. He's not the only begotten son of God anymore, thank God. Well, in 1 Peter chapter 2, uh, uh, the apostle Peter is going to look back at that day, praise God, when Jesus did just what Isaiah prophesied. And he's going to make this statement in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 22. Well, I will back up to verse 21. For even un hereunto were ye called, because Christ, or the anointed one, also suffered for us. Well, we know what he suffered, sicknesses, disease, pain. Uh, 
Amen. Grief. He suffered for us. Thank you, Jesus. Leaving us an example that we should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not. But committed himself to him that judged righteously. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body. This the, is the physical healing part of it. We know that he carried our sins. Amen. That's a spiritual issue. But in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes, amen, on that physical body, you were healed. You were cured. You were made whole. And so clearly it was God's, the Father's will that none of his children suffer sicknesses, disease, pain, viruses of any kind. Any sickness and disease that Satan could dream of, amen. Even when Jesus walked on the earth physically, anytime he ran into sin, sin, or anytime he ran into sickness in his physical presence, he eradicated it. Okay. He saw six people, praise God. He, he listened to God the Father about what to do about it. And we saw many cases, praise God, where scripture said they brought unto him people who were demon possessing every sickness and every disease and he healed them all. Everybody praise God. Hallelujah. So clearly sickness and disease is not something that the anointing is, is, uh, has any weakness with. Acts 10 38 says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Amen. Then I'm going to read a scripture I read Sunday to help some people understand a statement I made at the end of the service. Return to 1 John chapter 3. Praise God. Can I get three more hallelujah somebody? Now in 1 John chapter 3, we'll read here in verse 8. He that practices sin as a lifestyle, that's actually what it means, is of the devil. Christians don't practice sin as a lifestyle. They might fall into it. They might trip into it. You're supposed to not stay in the peg, pig pen. Get up, get washed off, and get back to walking. And God's so good, he said, if, now if you confess before me, I'll treat you though like you never fell in. And I'll have no more remember of it. I mean, God is good. Amen. Well, he that practiced sin is a lifestyle of the devil. The, the devil from the beginning sin. But for this purpose, this is the reason that the Son of God appeared or was manifested. Why? that he might destroy the works of the devil. Now, the Greek word, the New Testament is translated from the Greek, and the Greek word uh, destroy is the, is the word luo. And it means to loosen. The word works is ergon. And the word ergon means acts, deeds, labors of the devil. Jesus said in John 10, 10, the thief came but, but to steal, kill, and destroy. He uses sickness and disease as part of that regiment in order to kill, steal, and to destroy Christians and the world. Now I said Jesus came to loosen that, which is different than Jesus came to eradicate it so it don't exist. First John chapter 4, verse 4 says, In whom the God, does a small case G, not a big G, amen, but a small G, in whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them that believe not. Less or unless, if you don't blind them, the light of the glorious gospel of God will shine unto them. They would do what? Accept it. Yeah, amen. But note what it said about him. It calls him the God of this world. Now why that's important is because you need to understand what world you belong to. Amen. Turn to Colossians if you would. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now in Colossians, praise God, chapter one, it says here in verse 10 that we might walk worthy of the Lord to all pleasing, being productive in every good work, increasing in the knowledge of God, 
strengthened with all might according to his glorious power and to all patience and long suffering with joyfulness is all good prayer stuff. Giving thanks unto the Father which has made us able to be a partaker of the inheritance of the saints in light who have, have is past tense, past. Who has delivered us from the authority, that word here, power, is exousia or exousia. We've been talking about authority. Who delivered us from the authority of darkness. Say, I'm delivered from darkness authority. And has translated or transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption through his blood, even forgiveness of sin. And so we are in the world, but we are not of the world. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5 says, we are ambassadors for Christ. The United States ambassador in Switzerland is not a Swiss citizen. He may be in Switzerland, but he's a U.S. citizen representing America. You here are not of the world. You are in the world, but you represent the kingdom of Almighty God. So Satan is the God of this world and not the God of the believer. So Satan has a right to be here now. And what first John told us, the apostle John told us, Jesus came to loosen because before Jesus came, we were absolute slaves. We were bound and there was nothing we could do about it. But Jesus came to loosen that grip. Now, the grip's been loosened, not destroyed. So that means you are still surrounded by loads of sickness and disease and poverty and death and fear. It's all around you. Amen. It's been loosened from you, meaning that you can just shake it off. It ain't got you no more. You can just, please. But it also means, however, since it's still here, if you don't exercise spiritual authority, it can grab you, reattach to you, and you be treated no different than whether or not you were born again or not. Okay? Now, this, this is important to understand. Because if you don't understand this, it's how you come up with all kind of stuff. Well, God must have put this on me for some reason. And, and God must be trying to teach me something for some reason. And, and you know, people trying to intellectualize why stuff happened. People are always, why? Why did it happen? I was trying to intellectualize it, you know. They don't have enough data to be able to do that. Because the data is found in the word. You can never, can never decide how something spiritually uh, and why something spiritually is by the natural realm. It's the other way around. You see what's happening in the natural realm by going to the spirit realm. Spirit first would tell you why in the natural realm. Okay, amen? Now, there are four areas of healing, and particularly I want to talk about. Number one, I'm going to talk about the five, fact that the price has been paid. I've already covered that. Number two, I want to talk about your responsibilities. I said your responsibilities to maintain your health. Then the third thing, I want to talk about levels of faith regarding healing. And then number four, how to receive and maintain your health and your healing. So let's go to number two, praise God, our responsibility for our health. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, please. Hallelujah. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, let's read verse 16 over here. And it reads as follows. Know ye not, church at Corinth, church at Southfield, and church at wherever else you're watching me, know ye not that ye are the temple of God. He's referring to your body. Uh, amen. As God's church building. You are the temple of God and that the spirit, capital S, the Holy Ghost, dwelleth in you. Verse 17 says, and if any man defiles that temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Now, the Greek word for defile is the word pharaoh. And it means he that wasted, wasted, 
cause it to be shriveled or withered, yes. cause it to be spoiled or ruined. Yes. Okay. Him shall God, and the, the word destroy here is also Pharaoh. Yes. Okay. Amen. He will be wasted away, shriveled, withered, be spoiled and ruined. In other words, you will reap what you sow. So if you don't treat God's temple as not yours, but as his property, and if you don't treat it as being holy, amen, that's why. Now, uh, somebody's going to say, oh, yeah, you give me your opinion on people are right so, yeah, yeah, your opinion about something, just your opinion about something, sir. And I always tell you when it's my opinion. Amen. I tell you when it's my opinion. I tell you when it's the book. Amen. I'm telling you, when they write me, they're not arguing with me. They're arguing with the Bible. Because I give chapter and verse for everything I say. Amen. And lots of it. Okay? Now I'm going to tell you my opinion. Amen. Everybody say, you about to tell us his opinion. Amen. Since this body don't belong to me, and God himself, the Holy Ghost, is on the inside of me. I don't think I want to make it a billboard. That's my opinion. I don't think I want to mark it up. That's just my opinion. Now, you can have five million tattoos if you want to. That is your business. I don't care. Amen. But I think we all look at things as, Okay, if God's on the inside of me and this is his temple, what should I do here? That's the point. That's the point. Okay, amen? How you think about how you approach it. Praise the Lord. Now, now I also didn't turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, because so what we're saying is we have a responsibility for to take care of this body because the understood subject of this census is you do this. So everybody want to put all this on God. Okay, and say, well, God, I'm supposed to be, you're supposed to heal me. So then God said, well, what, did you do your part? Amen. That's your part. Here in 1 Corinthians, praise God, chapter 6, verse 19, says this. What? I, mean, I can just hear Paul say, what? Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? We just read that in chapter 3, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own. You are bought with a price. That price was the blood of Jesus on that cross. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which belongs to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, the word glorify doxazo means to render something glorious. It means honor. It means to magnify. Glory to God. So he said to render glorious and to honor and to magnify God with your body. So I just wondered, I'm just wondering if you have tattooed ace of spades on your body, whether or not that's glorifying God. I just wondered. I just wonder. And people just follow trends. They just do something because other people do it. Some the style, so then they just go do it because it's the style. No thought. Just do it. Follow the herd, whichever way the herd runs. Run with the herd. Hello, somebody. I'm an independent thinker. I will ask questions. Why are we doing this? Or what's the truth behind it? Let's do some study. Let's see about this. Amen. Amen. Maybe it's good. Yeah. Maybe it's not. Amen. But I'm not accepting nothing on his face. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise God. And so you glorify God with the body. Now, we've already seen from chapter 3. That law of seed time and harvest is in there. You destroy the body, you be destroyed. Amen. Why? It's Genesis 8.22. That's what he just said. He said, as a man sows, that's what he shall reap. In Galatians, he says it. And in Genesis 8.22, praise God, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest shall not cease. 
See, so that means then, since your body belongs to God, guess what? You better pay attention to what you put in it. How you care for it. Because you are held accountable whether you know it or not, your body will hold itself accountable and will cause you to be sick and diseased down the road based on the seed you planted it. It's why God told Israel to eat certain ways. God gave Israel a diet. He didn't do it for spiritual reasons. He did it for natural reasons so that they could live longer and better. So there is something to be said about Praise God, the things that affect the body. Later on, we'll get to that when I start talking about this on a Sunday morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. But God told them that for a reason. Now, let's talk about faith levels for a moment. There was a man, some of you who studied, studied uh, historical things and biblical kind of standpoint, have heard of John G. Lake. Anybody here have heard of John G. Lake? Most of you have. All right, well, John G. Lake was a great man of God, highly anointed. In fact, John G. John G. Lake, back when it was the whole bubonic plague, back to the turn of the century, you know, 19th century, into the 20th century and all that, uh, John G. Lake was such that one time they, they had him put his hand under a microscope, and they took these deadly diseases and put it in his hands. And he looked in the microscope, and they saw as soon as the diseases touched his hand, the diseases died. See, so, so John G. Lake was highly, highly strong in faith. Amen. Amen. Most certainly anointed. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Very high level on this issue. But not everyone functions at that level. Amen. But we're all striving to get to that level. Amen. Now, turn to Romans chapter 4. Amen. Because this will help you with a statement. I know somebody says something to me and then the service just did something. I said, okay, let me, let me just do a little teaching on that because one person said something about it. Then a hundred people thought it. Okay. So in Romans chapter 4, let's read verse 19. Because there are levels of faith. And being not weak in faith, he, referring to Abraham, Consider not his own body now dead. When he was a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through all unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able also to perform. Now in these two verses, we've already seen two levels of faith. Being not weak in faith, so there can be weak faith. Amen. Being strong in faith, praise God. So we see both. So that tells you right there, there are levels. An individual can be weak. An individual can be strong. In Matthew, the 14th chapter, if you turn over there, praise God. Jesus is going to be there with uh, Peter. Peter's going to be in the boat with all the other disciples. It's going to be a storm. Jesus is walking on the, excuse me, in this case, Jesus is going to be walking on the sea. And it was a storm. The wind was contrary. And the disciples are all scared when they see him walking. And they, they cried out. And Peter said, Lord, that's, that's you. Verse 28. Bid me come out on this water. He just gave him one word, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water <laughs> to go to Jesus. One word, believe, caused the elements of the world to be of no consequence. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. Fear. Fear will stop you Walking in the supernatural. Amen. And being afraid and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said, O thou of, see this, little faith. Yeah. Whereunto didst thou doubt? He said, Now you had a little dab of faith. And for a minute, man, you had that dab of faith and you was actually walking on top of this water. Yeah. 
And then you looked. See? Now, what did the winds and waves have to do with the man walking on the water? Nothing. But that's Satan's deception. So he will put in front of you things to grab your attention, to divert you from the fact that you're operating supernatural. But we see this term, of course, little faith. So we've seen weak faith. We've seen strong faith. We've seen, praise God, little faith. Obviously, a person can have no faith, right? Or lose what they lose what they had. The parable of the sower sows the word. Mark chapter 4, verse 15. The first seed by the wayside. And the word was sown. It says Satan came immediately and took away the word that was sown in the hearts. He didn't have to do anything because when they heard the word, they just didn't receive it. And there are many Christians who don't believe in divine healing. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Praise God. So, everything in the word has degrees. Yes. Turn to Mark chapter 4. Let's go to the fact, let's look at that parable of the sword. You know, this parable is the number one parable. It's the first parable that Jesus taught. It's the key parable to all the other parables. That's why I always go back to it a time and again. And why you should. I know what Jesus said in Mark 4.20. These are they which are sown on good ground. That's the word of God is planted into the people who are going to do something with it. They hear the word, they receive it, and they produce. But notice, some 30-fold, some 60-fold, some 100-fold. Those are different levels of production. But they all heard the word. Now, you shouldn't be beating somebody up because they are 30-fold producer. Amen. That's right. That's right. They produce them. Amen. It may not be a 60-fold producer right now. Right. may not be a 100-fold producer right now, but they are a producer. Amen. Are you listening to me? Yeah. John G. Lake, we're talking about, we talking about 100 there on that issue. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? But what I'm trying to show you is that there are levels of faith and so it should not cause anybody a problem if you hear a statement like, well, I've not, I'm not had it. Okay. Amen? And if I did, then I'd know that I need to go get stronger on it. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? Because uh, an individual can be strong in faith in one area and weak in another. You can be strong in faith on financial things. You can believe God, man. You can believe God for means of God. You can believe, I mean, praise God. You can do it without doubt. You don't have no, nothing about it. And then you couldn't believe God for a cold. Amen. Or vice versa. Okay? It depends on what you spend the time and build yourself up spiritually. We've also learned that you can come to a place where you can build yourself up on the word and then stop doing the things that brought you to the mountain. And it can leak out you, Hebrews chapter 2, Amen. and it can leak out you so that once upon a time you were somebody, something came against you, you just blew that off. Amen. But now here you are 10 years later, and that's the thing that knocks you out. Amen. Which is why there has to be the day and night of the meditation of the word as a lifestyle. Amen. It's something you do to the day you die. Yes. Because in spiritual things, you're either moving forward and getting better or you're moving backwards and getting worse. Ain't no middle ground. And it's each day. So many Christians are this way. They're actually running in place. They're doing just enough to stay pretty much in this level. And they don't really go way past. Or they become lazy. And that's why I'm, when I'm talking about staying at home and all that, if, I, I'm not beating up on people. There are people who should, they, they need to stay home. And thank God for technology. On the other hand, the scripture said, the diligent make it rich. So what's happened is that Many people, and this is not just with church, we've employers have seen this. I've seen this with employers in many different industries. People have become comfortable being at home. Well, that's one thing if you're working for IBM. But it's another thing when God, God has a word about it. 
And then when God says, forsake not the assembling of yourself together, now you're in disobedience to God. And, so, and what happens that, when you have, any time you have lack of diligence or disobedience, you cannot claim and expect that you're going to have the things that God work for you very strongly. Amen. That's why the scripture says all through Proverbs, says it again and again. Amen. Okay, amen. You fool yourself. Amen. Because what is running the show is not the spirit. Amen. What's running the show is the body. Amen. Good preaching. Woo! This man is preaching. Oh, preach, Bishop. Oh, glory. I ain't getting but one amen, so I say amen to myself. Amen. She always say amen, so thank God for it. <laughs> Hallelujah. So Mark 4.20 tells you any word from God is not a put down of judgment. But you can be very strong in one area and not as, have not as much development in another. I have to use my faith across the board. I have to believe God for over a million dollars a month every month just to keep the doors open in the ministry I run. Because this is only one part of it, this place here. It's only one part. Are you listening to me? Amen. We're on four continents. I got employees on four continents of the world. Okay, amen. We're doing a lot of stuff in a lot of places. I have to believe God for a million a month. I got to believe God for it because nobody's going to hear me talk about well, we don't have the money to pay the salaries Amen. or something else. Ain't nobody going to have no sympathy on me. It's certainly not the devil. Amen. So I have to be developed in this area. Amen. And I have to be developed in other areas. Praise God. Amen. 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 Now, turn to 1 Timothy chapter 6. Yes. I'm just laying some things out here today. I'm going to be teaching on this for a few weeks on Sunday morning. Amen. Praise God. But I want to start with this crew here tonight. Amen. Because... Uh, the subject of healing took a real beat during this pandemic. And, and you, you find out who really has got what when you find out who's got what and who really is what is when bad stuff happens. See, before that, people be cruising along, man, and then when bam, they, <laughs> when the stuff really go down and, and, and uh, rubber meets the road, then you find out who got what. You find out where you're at. Amen. We know God's will is that you be in health. Amen. No doubt about it. That's the whole reason for Jesus coming partial. Now here in 1 Timothy chapter 6, let's read here. Oh, I think I want verse 20, I think. Yeah. And he writing a young pastor. Timothy, keep that which is committed to your trust. Avoiding wicked and empty babbling and oppositions of science falsely so-called, which some professing have erred concerning the faith. Grace be with thee, um, amen. Now, so he talk, talks to, to watch out about science because there's good and bad science. And it can be used for good and bad. Just because somebody is a scientist or a doctor does not mean that they are holy. Doesn't mean that they speak with integrity. Doesn't mean they don't have ulterior motives. Scientists or doctors are no different than anybody else. They are human beings. Are you listening to me? An unsaved scientist and unsaved doctors act like unsaved lawyers and unsaved teachers and unsaved, I don't care whatever you're talking about. Satan has access to them. Amen? Now, if you couple them with unsaved politicians and add lots of money, you have the potential for bad science. Like what's happened here in this pandemic? I can remember the stuff in this pandemic and they were saying, the science said, and anything else was misinformation. Now, a year and a half later, what was misinformation is now standard science. 
in a bunch of areas. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Glory to God. And, and listen, I was watching the news the other day. Uh, the science has changed. <laughs> changed, huh? <laughs> okay, amen. And it can be used, medicine and science, can be used to deny freedom and to, and to control people. I didn't say that it has been. Drop your rocks. I said it could be. Here's a fact before the pandemic. The third leading cause of death for people in the United States, you know what it is? Medical errors. A quarter of a million people every year died, died, or injured, severely injured, with medical errors. You might want to add that into the statistics of death. You also might want to add into you know, the flu, the normal flu, used to kill between 30 and 80,000 people every year, every year before the pandemic. You might want to put that in. Total. I mean, I think that's why I tell people, you know, you should do a little research and not just don't, don't, don't be just a guppy and just, so-and-so said, well, I'm glad they said it. I'm checking behind so and so. I'm doing some research, especially since this body belongs to God. I got an answer for it. At least I'm gonna know what He's saying about it. Then I can do Colossians three fifteen. Follow peace of God. Amen. But doing stuff just because people say it. Don't worship at the white coats. And just like he talked about to Timothy, he said some some then have done what? They ha they have erred concerning the faith. Now turn to the book of Daniel, the Old Old Testament, of course, Daniel chapter twelve. Amen. Again, I'm just laying out some principles here. I'm going to flush all this stuff out. You know what I do. I'm going to flush all this stuff from the book. Amen. Now, if the Bible is not the highest authority to you, if other stuff are equal to the Bible, yeah, you're going to be mad at me. Because to me, the Bible is God speaking to me. So it settles all matters. If I find it in the book, that's it. I ain't got no argument. I ain't got no, that's the way I got to go. If I don't believe that, I don't know why people are in the pulpit, they don't believe that. You don't believe that, what are you doing up here? Sure. Hello. And if you don't believe that, what you coming to church for? If it's a social club and it's a, you're trying to get business opportunities or trying to find a husband, a wife, or a girlfriend, or something else, I realize now everybody comes to church for the, for the right reason. People do come to church for all kinds of reasons. But if you're one of those persons who's coming because you want to hear what the Holy Ghost has said, chapter and verse is sacrosanct. Now here, know what he said in the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 4, and it's God's wrapping up with the vision that he gave Daniel, verse 4. He said, but thou, O Daniel, shut up these words. I've given you all this vision. Seal the book, even to the time of the end. Underline that. What's going to happen at the time of the end? Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Well, at the time of the end, that's exactly what we have seen. Men now will go to and fro. fro. I can get on the debt, praise God, and I can be in Ireland in seven hours. But in the old days, it would have took months months to cross that Atlantic to get to Ireland. Today you can just get on a plane and do it in seven hours to Dublin. Okay, amen? Why? Knowledge. Technology, praise God. It certainly has increased. That increased technology does two things. 
It allows for greater blessing and greater harm. It depends on whose hands it is and what their spiritual value is. Amen. Now, lastly, I'm going to turn to 1 Corinthians 11 chapter because I'm running out of time today, but anyway, I'm just kind of laying this out. So I want to encourage you to pay attention as I teach on this stuff. Amen. Amen. Because it is God's will for you to be healed and whole. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. And in times like these, Romans 10, 17 is really true. So then faith come by hearing and hearing. Amen. Hearing with your ear and hearing with your heart. Amen. Glory to God. Come with your heart open to receive. God will renew your mind, pour into you. Amen. And you climb the ladder, a ladder to full and complete health. But there's a part you have to play. And what we saw, part of that had to deal with what you did with the body. Now, I, I have a doctor who was born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, and is a word of faith man. That's my doctor is, right? I go see him twice a year. January and June. Okay, I just saw him last month in January. I'll be back down there see him again in June. Amen. So during the time of the pandemic, what happened to me was like happened to a lot of people. Yes. For about 15 years, I was the same size for about 15 years. Uh -huh. Had a routine that kept me that way. Yeah. The pandemic came, I got knocked out of my routine. Mm -hmm. Anybody else that happened to? Me? I got knocked out of the routine I had for 15 years, gained 10 pounds. Yeah. All went right here. So I was there in, there in January. Now my doc okay, knows who I am, what I am, what I do, and has great respect for me in my office. Amen. But he talked to me like a doctor talking to a patient. Amen. He said, now you look at here. Satan wants to take you off the battlefield. You know this. That's right. And if he can't take you off the battlefield, because he's been trying to take you off the battlefield for a lot of years, hasn't he? Yeah, he tried to kill me a number of times. And if he can't take you off the battlefield, then he wants to get you at least sick enough so that you can stop looking outward to minister to people and have to only just turn inward to take care of yourself. Yeah. Right. So the first thing he said to me was, you're going to lose these 10 pounds. Yeah. I said, Doc, next time you see me, it'll be gone. And it will be. I ain't talking about six months either. It will be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why? Because he didn't ticked off from me. He showed me. Because every time I go, I get all naked. Oh, man. The nurses go crazy, man. They all these tests. And they, they, I had to go stick me. Oh, it didn't work. Let me stick you again. Oh, didn't work. Let me go back and get that stick. <laughs> I want to say, lady, I'm going to lay hands on you in Jesus' name. And just, um, you stick me again with that knee. <laughs> and I go through all this, they do all this battery, they didn't take me through this whole thing, you know. So he was showing me, you know, pro and God. I said, so now nah, you ain't there. Okay, you're very healthy. I'm healthy. But he said, but you're trending toward these things. And these things you are trending toward will do X, Y, Z. It won't be God's fault. It won't be the devil. Right, right, right. See, if I were to continue that, it wouldn't be God's fault or the devil. It would be mine solely. Amen. And it would be because I disobeyed what I knew what God said. Yeah. Amen. You see? So we got to get out, get out of this, you know. Well, man, I'm at pandemic was lazy. Especially that first couple months, you know. Sitting there and sitting there and sitting there with Pastor Deborah looking at each other. I'm used to being in the office. I'm used to being on the road. You can't go nowhere. We're sitting there looking at each other and you can only make love so much. I mean. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I mean, just looking at each other all day long, you know. And, and you know what? You'd be sitting in the pantry be calling you Keith, Keith, I got some special stuff for you. Yes, Keith, come to me. And before, I would have been passing that pantry. I'm sitting at home now. Right. 
And my, is my body the only one that talks to you? Anybody else's body talk to you? I'm going to finish this, okay, what I'm saying here. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> that parent, she was calling me, man. She was calling me. And Pastor Deborah wasn't helping, man, because she putting stuff in the pantry that shouldn't be in the pantry. Now, the reason why I was in the pantry for the grandchildren. So I've been told. Right? When well, the grandkids come, because the grandkids want to eat all stuff that's bad. Especially my little ones, but the yeah. teenagers too, yeah. right? So all that stuff is for the grandkids, but I won't pass that pantry. Yeah. Yeah. And that bad stuff, Bishop, <laughs> Bishop, <laughs> Bishop, <laughs> turn around, Bishop, open the door. It won't hurt, just open the door and boing. And the body said, feed me. Right. <laughs> right? Real easy getting knocked off your routine. So now, what the Lord told me about this year, he told me pandemic's ending this year. He told me about this authority year for believers. He told me we had to get the church back in shape. Spiritually, naturally. Look at your neighbor and say, I know he's talking to you. All right, let's finish with 1 Corinthians 11 chapter now in this. Anybody get anything out of this today? We're just getting started on this issue. And don't stay home because you don't want to hear it. It's for your good, man. 1 Corinthians 11 chapter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here's something we don't want to see. Verse 28. Let a man examine himself. To examine yourself means I'm not looking down the row at so and so. Examining himself means I'm looking at my own self. And if you're talking about the body, you're talking about looking yourself in the mirror. Let a man examine himself, so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. It's talking about here from communion. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation. Now, the word damnation here is the word that means judgment. There is a verdict that will be rendered, and it can be rendered as guilty or innocent. But this person doing the things you're not supposed to do here is guilty, right? So he says, damnation to himself not discerning the Lord's body. Well, we found out that this body is the Lord's body. Now, I know that he's also, of course, referring to the body of Christ spiritually. Okay, I know this is what he's talking about. It's chapter 12. He's going to then say that. But we also read, this is the same group. This is Corinthians. We read chapter 6 and, and chapter 3. So guess what? He's referring to both. Not only the Lord's body in terms of other Christians, but also this body. Right? Not rightly discerning the Lord's body because of this, for this cause. And this is the word that I circled years ago in my Bible because it stood out to me. Many. Now he's writing about the church. Many in the church are weak. Many in the church are sick. And they're among you, and many sleep, which means they died early. Amen. If we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. When we are judged, we're chastened of the Lord because how God has set things in motion. When it talks about him shall God destroy, it means that God has set up the system of seed, time, and harvest. Yes. That's God's system. The system will work, and it does work. Whether you know it, believe it, don't believe it, don't know it. It works. God's system works. As a man sold that, he'll reap. Hallelujah. So it says, he that's, that yields to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. 
He that yields to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. So allowing, we're still going back to allowing your spirit to say to you, because this is what happened. Praise God. You walk past the pantry, and the pantry calls out to you, Bishop! Bishop! Come see me! And the Holy Ghost said, Keep walking! Keep walking! And tell Deborah to throw everything out! Because that may be what you may have to do. You may have to go in the closet. The same thing when I teach people to stop smoking and stop drinking. God, I've, taught, I've taught many a person who've given up smoking and drinking that I've ministered to. They no longer smoke and don't drink for decades. Mr. I don't know how many hundreds of people that way. Okay, been delivered of that. But they cannot have the package of cigarettes still in the house and they cannot have no liquor in the house. But we gonna do this? You gotta make some decisions. Right, amen, one more time. I know y'all don't like this. That's all right. My job is not to make you like me. My job. My job is to help you. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Whether you like me or not, that's my job. So, praise God. You may need to make decisions. Now, that's not everybody. But you know yourself. So you got to be honest with yourself. And there are certain things you just cannot deal with. Everybody's like that. Amen. Hebrews chapter 1 said, the sin, chapter 12 rather, said the sin was thus so easily beset you, Hebrews 12, 1. So there are things, other stuff don't bother you at all, but there's a certain something. This area for you is a real challenge. Amen. All of us have at least one of those. Yeah. Amen. Stand with me, please. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So many in, many in the church can be weak and sickly and die prematurely, even though Jesus paid the price for their sickness and disease and they didn't have to be that. But we already saw that this was the case. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I'm not telling you that you should not pay any attention to science. I'm not telling you that you should not take medicine. I'm not telling you you should not listen to a doctor. I am telling you you do your homework after they tell you. Amen. Amen. Find out what they're prescribing. Do you know doctors sometimes prescribe the wrong thing? Yes. 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 Do you know sometimes that in the hospitals, the, the hospital didn't intend it, but there's a reason why you have to sign all them documents? Yeah. Yeah. You know why before they come on you? You know why you got to sign once, twice, three times, four times, five times, nine times. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about? You know why you got to sign all those documents if you die? Why? Because people go to the hospital and get killed by the hospital. Unintentionally, I don't mean it. But they are human beings. All human beings, even highly educated ones, make mistakes. Hallelujah. So do your homework. See, it's like people now, I'm going to talk about the shot for a minute. I ain't talking for them or against them. I told you I'm neutral as far as you're concerned publicly. Okay, amen? People ask me, I say, I ain't telling them. One thing I'm telling you is Colossians 3.15. Allow the peace of God to rule in your spirit. I don't talk to you well enough, especially though you've been around a while. I don't talk to you enough how to follow the Holy Ghost. Why don't you ask him? I ain't getting into all that. Then if somebody being made a political thing out of when the Democrats and then the Republicans all say you side one way or the other, and I ain't saying nothing either one of them. I got through with politics, man, well over a decade and a half ago. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 No, but I'm gonna tell you this. Well, if you take the shot. Then you'll be done with. You can never communicate to anybody else. You'll be good. Girl. Now you need a 
your second shot. Now you need a third shot. By the way, you can communicate this disease to other people, and you can get it. That's why we got to have a second shot, and a third shot, and a fourth shot. You ever read what happens to more shots you take? You ever look that up? Why don't you look it up? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You might want to read some literature and not just let somebody tell you this is just disinformation. What is now gospel was once disinformation. So then who decides what's disinformation? What is science about? Do you know what science is about? Science questions everything. Science questions assumptions and doesn't beat people up for questioning it. If they beat people up for questioning it, you can be sure somebody had something somewhere. <laughs> Must be some somebody don't know. Must be some somebody don't want somebody to know something. Here's something you should always follow. <laughs> Come on, Lord. Here's something you should always follow. Follow the money. Yeah. Oh, you got to give me some Bible on that. I will. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. The love of money is the root of all evil. There you go. There's that Bible again. You keep throwing that Bible at us. That's right. That's exactly right. The Bible told you follow the money. Who getting paid? It is information out here. You can find out who's getting paid. And if you do all of everything that I said, maybe you might see things a little different than you do today after you become a little bit more educated. That's all I'm saying. Okay, get educated in the Word of God first and foremost, and get educated about stuff, come across Amen. television. Right. And out of the mouths of your friends and everybody else, find out for yourself. Right. Make a decision for yourself based on knowledge Amen. and prayer. Amen. Ain't good to go then. I mean, then you, you don't get mad at nobody. I'm not, I'm not mad at you. You don't agree with me about the other stuff. That's what you did the research. We both did the research. You came out to the same conclusion. We saw the same thing. Different strokes for different folks. Cool. But if you're ignorant, you're ignorant about stuff, and I ain't. Then you ascribe other motives to me. I got to walk in love. Let's lift a hand and give God praise for the words. Lord, we thank you and give you praise and glory. We thank you for it in the name of Jesus. Praise you, hallelujah. Thank you for the word. Now, Father, I have prayed that our understanding be enlightened tonight. And on these things, I trust that some of us have already had some things that you've spoken to us individually, Holy Spirit. So now I pray that you would bring across the path for my brothers and sisters information to help them see your will for their health and healing. We already know it's your will that they be healthy, spirit, soul, and body. And that they be like Moses, eyesight not dim, ramrod straight, died old age. We thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Let's praise God for the word tonight, Father, we thank you. Father, we praise and worship and adore and magnify and glorify and honor you. Hallelujah, we thank you for the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. 
1 Corinthians 5, 7 says we walk by faith, not by sight. Walk by the word, not the physical senses. Because the word is the highest authority of all. There is nothing higher than God's word. Because the word and God are one. You cannot separate God from his word. And you can't separate the word from God. Hallelujah. Thank God for authority. Now where every head is bowed and every eyes closed in prayer, please. There might be someone here watching us tonight and you've not made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. You haven't been born again. You see, there's a lot of good things that come with being born again. Praise God. Not only do you have heaven forever, but you have the Holy Spirit, your teacher and guide. He reveals secrets, leads and guides, direct you. He'll help if you with your cooperation. He'll help keep you safe. He'll help keep you healed. He'll help you get provided for. Praise God, because God loves you. He'll help protect your children. It's God's will for your life. But you have to make a decision, first of all, to come to him and enter into his kingdom. You say, how do I do that? The Bible said in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, if you would acknowledge with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the highest authority of all. And shall believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. The scripture said, you shall be saved. Is with your heart you believe unto right standing with God. And with your mouth you acknowledge your deliverance because he said so. Verse 13 says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord, that will include you shall be saved. Amen. And so I'm going to ask this congregation to pray out loud with me and those of you online. You want to be born again? You want to make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? I want you to pray with us today. He'll come into your heart right where you are. Everyone, lift one hand towards heaven. That's where help comes from. And pray this with me, please. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I do believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he died for me on the cross. And there he carried my sins. He was put in the grave. But I believe he's risen. He's alive now. Come into my heart. I accept you as my savior. And as the master of my life. I repent of sin. I'm sorry, Lord. I accept your offer of forgiveness. Thank God I'm forgiven. Thank God I'm restored. Thank God I'm in fellowship. Heaven is my home. Jesus is my Lord. Hallelujah. And Father, I pray for whoever prayed the prayer with me, wherever they might be. Thank you, they are now members of the kingdom of God, heirs of God, and joint heirs with the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray now, Father, that the eyes of their understanding may be even more enlightened. Lead and guide them in this area so that they may become stronger in you. We thank you for In Jesus' name, everyone in agreement with this prayer said, Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.